you all for coming. Um, this is a special moment for us, for the NYU community of scholars and humanists, and it's also a special moment for definitely for the author and the panelist, and for myself, because for, through a bizarre set of circumstances, I actually am a fan of Syrian theater uh, for many, many years. And uh, I read this book as, as an amateur, and it made me understand many things that I thought I always knew, but reread them again. Um, my colleague and, Fred and friend, Professor Edward Zitter, is the chair um, of uh, the Department of Drama, right? Yes. Okay, the Department of Drama, and he's an associate professor of drama. His areas are very, very wide. I also noticed that you are a fellow UC System graduate like yes. myself. Yes. I went to UCLA. So he is a student of 19th century British theater and pop popular entertainment, romantic drama, and the history of acting, Arab theater. And he's the author of The Orient on the Victorian Stage, 2003, and uh, various articles in the Wordsworth Circle, Theater Journal, Theater Survey, and numerous other anthologies. He's an affiliate faculty in the Departments of Performance Studies in English and recipient of a Fulbright Award for the Study of Arab Theater in Syria, 1994, and several other important prestigious awards. To my right. Um, Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm left-handed, I always complain, uh, to my left, and I'm very honored and very, very humbled to present to you Professor Naila Al-Atrash from Syria. She was born in Damascus, and she's a stage director. She's an actor, and she's a professor of acting. She's been closely engaged with Syria's main theater school, the High Institute of Dramatic Arts, where she headed uh, the acting department for many years and contributed in designing, to, in de in designing the curriculum. She is also actively involved in the theater of the large Middle East, having participated or in or chaired many symposia and festivals, as well as more, won many major awards. She is also a winner of the Golden Prize as an actress for a leading role in Carthage um, uh, Film Festival, Tunisia, 1986. She was invited to direct a number of plays and to conduct workshops in acting and directing in several cities, including Beirut, Amman, Cairo, Alexandria, Asila, and Morocco. Edinburgh, Columbus, Ohio, Cortland, New York, NYU, New York, Greensboro, um, Cape Town, and in uh, Christensen in Norway. Professor Atrash considers her work in theater as a social and political commitment through which she tries to mirror the realities, the tensions, the concerns of her people and the burning issues of her day, of the day. Her involvement as a hum human rights activist in fighting for civil liberties and freedom almost rivals her theater work. And with that, I would like to say a few words about the book and say a few things that I think would come up. Um, you can ignore it later when you're going to do the discussion, <laughs> but as a moderator, I'm supposed to say something that will launch the discussion. So clearly, you know, the, the, the issue here is theater and politics. And I think, you know, I mean, Ted didn't really write a, a, a history of, of theater in, um, in Syria since uh, 1967. It's actually a political history of the region as a whole. Um, the book touches on many, many things, and in fact, it really shows how you know theater in Syria is not only local, but it is regional and global in the same way, just as you know uh, the people who are here um, and the people who are featured in the book are considered themselves. And I was thinking about two images that come up from the book. You know, one is tragic and one is funny. Um, and I want to just begin by, by saying two, two small anecdotes. One actually doesn't belong in, in the, it doesn't appear in the book. It's something that I pick up elsewhere, um, but it is someone that is, uh, is in the book. I'll begin with the tragic uh, figure, uh, and that is uh, Saadalla Wanous. Uh, the playwright who uh, lost his life to cancer a few years ago, um, an amazing uh, playwright. And in, in the book, I find this gem that uh, um, is amazing in one of his uh, uh, later plays, The Rape. You know, there's a section there that he talks about, um, he talks about um, issues that has to do with uh, uh, Judaism, Islam, you know, Israel, Palestine, etc. And then he brings up the image of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah, who was hopelessly fighting, you know, uh, that the kings in Jerusalem will do two things, rule in justice and, you know, seek peace 
you know, and, and with, with the people and with the environment around them. Okay, this is not inside the play, but you know, it comes up in a very strange way as Wanus brings it. He says, did Jeremiah abandon his family and people? His tongue thundered and with, uh, with curses, but his heart split with compassion. And this is really, if you Im imagine and you understand and you see, read about the career of this prophet, this is when us really captures it. You know, this is someone who stays there and watches the, the catastrophe. Yes, watches his own people drive themselves into catastrophe, but doesn't leave them. Okay? Even though that he's at some point even in prison and so on. I was thinking about it a great deal. And I thought, you know, where did I read where did I read this word, you know, in Wanusa's words, again, to abandon, and the idea that the playwright doesn't abandon the people. And in his acceptance speech, uh, uh, he, uh, Wanus addressed uh, uh, UNESCO a few years ago. Uh, not a few years ago. He, addressed, he received uh, some a prize from UNESCO, and he made, he, he made a small speech, and he says, I have been asked, somewhat cynically, why I so stubbornly persist to write plays at a time when the, when the theater is receding, even fast disappearing from our lives. For me to abandon writing for the theater as I stand at the outer limits of my life would be tantamount to an act of betrayal that would only hasten my departure. I would further say, if I had to prefer a reply that I am determined to go on writing for the, the uh, for the theater to the very end and would add at the risk of re repeating myself that the theater must stay alive because without it the world would grow lonelier uglier and poorer and I think that Wanus was basically being Jeremiah here in a certain way you know just as Jeremiah didn't leave the people in Jerusalem and that is the playwright is a tragedy who doesn't leave the people who keep writing because otherwise the world will be lonelier and poorer and uglier. Nihat Kalai, who I love dearly, you know, also an amazing uh, 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 playwright and a comedian in Syria. Um, in a YouTube clip, a few, uh, few months or few years before he passed away, he's already an old man. He appears at a party and he tells a joke. And that's the comedic part, uh, 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 the thing. He says, he tells a joke about a man who had a parrot. And the parrot always used to talk against the government. And as he says, right at the beginning, he, he warns the audience and says, look, you know, this is not in our times. This is in the Turkish times. You know, I am Turkiya. Yes, he says that. And he says, and of course the man was afraid that, you know, the parrot would get him into trouble, you know, speaking against the government this way, the government that way. And... As Nihat Kala, he tells the story, he says, well, um, the owner of the parrot starved the parrot and the parrot kept talking against the government. He, he denied him water and the, and the parrot kept talking against the government. And then he went to a friend and he told the friend, look, you know, I starved him. And this goes into the wonderful chapter about torture mm -hmm. and the way torture is dealt with, you know, in, by, by comedians in, uh, in, in Syria. Okay. And he says, well, I starved him and he kept talking. I gave him, I denied him water and he kept talking against the government. And his friend says, look, I have a chicken house. Throw the parrot into the chicken house. It will be there for five minutes with the chicken. He will forget everything about politics. So, you know, the man takes the parrot, throws him into the chicken house. And immediately the parrot rises in colors and everything and he moves around. And all the chicken are running around, you know, making a lot of noise around him encircling him with a great deal of noise, make, making a lot of stuff with this stuff. And then, you know, the parrot looks around and he says, I bet this chicken never seen a political prisoner before. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have another image. And by the way, this is, this is the theater. This is the, you speak about torture. This is the theater that, you know, gave us the image of someone named Abu Kalabsha, yes? Yeah, yeah. The, the one who shackles you, yes? Um, uh, this is the theater, this is the playwright as you know as the parrot who is never understood you know is the parrot who's surrounded by chicken who never really understand him you know this is the this is the playwright who is 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 keep is going to insist on politics even when he's tortured and even when he's he's thrown in a place where everybody is dumb which is even I think is a bigger torture for a playwright okay so we have here these two images that I think emanating both from the the, the Syrian theater and also from the book. And I would start, you know, maybe you can ignore it, I said, you know, but 
but these two images of you know the, the tragic image of the playwright and the playwright that is a bit cynical or sarcastic about his own place within the society yeah thank you thank you i mean yeah, that's that is first of all thank you so much that was such a a, a, a rich and fun and, and generous response to the book and um yes the 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 thing that is stunning about these practitioners is that they insist on having their say and um, they insist on putting the work up even in the worst of times even with the most glaring threats um, and it um, it very much goes at the heart of the dilemma that prompted the writing of the book because I had been planning for I, I first went to Syria as a student in uh, 95, 94, thank you, 94. And since then, I've been meaning to write a book about Syrian theater. And um, in 2011, when the uprising started, and I thought it was going to be a quick uprising, I thought that it was going to, everyone I knew insisted it would just be a matter of months before the regime collapsed. And I thought, well, I have to write this book. I have to write the history of this theater. Um, and as the uh, and I started it here. Um, I so I you know I had uh, pitched the idea and I got the fellowship and I it allowed me to, to get started on the book. And I I thought I knew what I was going to write about. I was going to write about this. Um, I was going to write this Trump triumphant story of a theater that uh, stayed true to its um, its purposes and its goals and it spoke the truth and um, was now going to we were going to enter this time of a really kind of rich theatrical flourishing and I was very excited to, to go there and write the concluding chapters um, in this what was going to which, what I imagined to be was going to be a very joyous time and as time wore on and as the as one atrocity after another was committed, and uh, we arrived at a point where half the population was displaced and hundreds of thousands of people had been killed, um, the, the reason for writing the book became less clear to me. Um, the, re the need for this book at this particular moment. And um, it was, I, I had forgotten, you know, it, it was, the, it was, Wanus imagining himself as Jeremiah and insisting that put me in the cistern, it doesn't matter, I'm still going to be hollering the truth. Um, and um, it was the fact that these practitioners were still putting their work up. They were putting it online, on the web. They were leaving the country to work with refugees in therapeutic theater projects. They were um, rehearsing in secret to produce works that were based on the testimonies of people who had been tortured um, during the uprising. Um, and I thought, wow, you know, in fact, theater remains important even in times of atrocities precisely because it uh, doesn't purport to be the final solution, but that it is this insistence that even in a state of exception, um, even when um, when there are dire consequences for speech, people will insist on the right to speak. And if nothing else, we need to kind of celebrate that story. So it stopped being a history of Syrian theater, um, chronologically laid out, and it instead became a kind of thematic conversation about the key terms that Syrians have been fighting over and that continue to inform a lot of the creative resistance that is happening in the, um, in the uprising. Um, so I organized the book, rather than strictly chronologically, I organized it around um, martyrdom, um, Palestinians, history and heritage, torture. Um, how had these key terms been fought over. How is it that pro-regime artists have taken up those terms? How has the regime used them in its civic festivals and other performances? And how have uh, playwrights, 
try to wrench them back and change that discourse. How have the activists in the creative uprising um, turned those terms on their head? Um, what does it mean that the martyr is no longer the individual who dies to protect the regime, the martyr is the individual who has been killed by the regime? Um, how, how, is it, how was that transformation pulled off um, in the public sphere and in the media scape? Um, the thing that I had wanted to talk about a little bit, and I'll just circle back to that quickly, is uh, I wanted to talk about the time that I met this woman, because um, while I had been going to and from Syria for quite some time, uh, I only really started researching the Syrian theater in earnest when I met Nyla and her dramaturg, uh, Mary mm -hmm. Elias, um, and um, because they they made these plays me they helped me to understand these plays not just as terrific literature but as a, a kind of really important struggle um, to open up spaces for discourse uh, to open up spaces and um, I met Nyla and I was talking to her about Sadella Wanus and um, we talked specifically about a play um, that I love that I absolutely adore called uh, Historical Menomnomats or historical miniatures. A menomnomat is a, uh, a yeah, just call it miniatures. <laughs> um, and um, so she said to me, oh, I, when I staged it, I staged it in the Citadel of Damascus. The play depicts Tamerlane's siege of, um, of Damascus and it's set in the Citadel. And um, it, uh, it's a play that um, really takes up the Arab-Israeli struggle and the failure, the, all the different failures of the Assad regime within this historical moment, and specifically the, Ar the lack of an Arab response to the, the bombing of Beirut in 1982. It was a hugely controversial play. It could not be performed. It could, it, for the longest while, it couldn't be read. Um, and then after that, it certainly couldn't be performed. And Nyla continued to request permission to perform it and finally got permission because uh, Winus was dying of cancer. As V notes, he had been asked to deliver the uh, Theater Day speech at UNESCO, and he was being considered for a Nobel Prize. And so she got permission to do a small production at a theater institute. And she just, without really telling anyone, just moved it to the actual citadel. Um, where political prisoners had been housed up until the 1990s. So you had this site, which was both an important site, I mean, which was the site of the play. It becomes a kind of in situ production. But because people are familiar that this is the site where political prisoners had been housed for a very long time, and a, a kind of a knowledge that I think is coded deep into the play, uh, she was able to use those cells as part of her set design. Um, so she goes, oh, we'll go see it. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, it's closed. It's being renovated. She goes, it's not a problem. And she was married at the time to Khaled El Taj, who was a major film, an amazing actor and huge television and film personality. And he was driving a, what was it, like a Chevy Caprice? I mean, it was a big <laughs> American car. And we would drive down the street and people would see him and, you know, salute him. And we came up to the Kala and she, he just honked. And the great big door, you know, he walks up and they go, I'm Helen Tasher. And they're like, hello, sir. He goes, I need to come in. And they go, okay. They open up the door and we drove the car onto an archaeological site. Like, he like, there was some guy like with a toothbrush digging stuff around and Hallett pulls up and we show them around. And, and Nyla showed me this, you know, um, this amazing, you know, this production, and um, she showed me the cells where people had, these were just, you know, hideous little dirt cells without latrines, um, where people had been, had spent years of their lives, and how she used, she explained to me how she used these cells as part of her production concept, and why she had a character taken and imprisoned at one of the cells at the m beginning of the play and left there visible for the rest of the play. And as she's telling me this, Halleck goes, oh, I remember that's where the, that's where the gallows used to be. And I said, well, how did you know there was a gallows there? He goes, oh, well, you know, I was, I was imprisoned here. And I said, really, what did you do? He goes, oh, I didn't do anything. They were just imprisoning people then. Um, and, um, you know, I just, I, I was just 
stunned at the courage of these people and the audacity. And I just thought, and to me, it was the same thing, like the kind of person who just drives a late model Chevy Caprice onto an archaeological dig is the same kind of personality um, that would be undetoured by t being told these plays are forbidden, stay away from them. So I, it's just, re it means a lot to me that Nyla can be here um, for this book launch. Uh, well, in, um, uh, in his acknowledgement, Ted Zeiter said that I, among other um, theater, Syrian theater practitioners, um, devoted many hours uh, educating him about our national theater. After I read the book, I found out that you, Ted, educated me about my national theater. <laughs> and that is honestly, I'm saying this. Um, aside from being the first uh, study of uh, Syrian theater in English, uh, the book provides uh, a comprehensive, engaging overview of the Syrian political theater in particular, and the Arabic in general because we have many shared things, especially the political theater. We have the same kind of regimes, the same stamp, as we say. Uh, it was so interesting for me, reading the book, to look at myself through the lens of another culture. And that, by itself, compelled me uh, to reconsider some of my views and understanding about particular issues discussed in Syrian theater. The real value of the book, I think, it's in the um, questions it raises. Among many other questions, the book asks, who have we become, we, the Syrians, under this long a state of exception, dating 1963 when Al Ba'ath Party seized power and curtailed uh, civil liberties. What can the theater mean and do in the midst of apparent national disintegration? As a Syrian working in theater, I say theater can still do much. And here's the, my take. Uh, if we were to ponder the current crisis that the regimes of the Arabic countries are going through, we will discover that the main cause for that is, uh, 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 or consists of uh, 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 the absence of dialogue. Uh, uh, the marginalization of people and their being banned from taking part in any decision-making process. Our political authority converses with itself. No uh, 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 dialogue is going between the two sides. And when we know that the theater's main language is uh, 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 dialogue, then isn't the theater a model that must be followed? If the absence of the dialogue is a main cause for the crisis, then will its presence help solve the uh, uh, crisis and uh, perhaps resolve it? Uh, 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 can the theater as a uh, uh, dialogue-based uh, uh, structure um, represent an alternative for the resistance, meaning resistance uh, against all kinds of repression. If we take the uh, 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 Syrian uh, case again, uh, we could see how the theater, through the wars of its practitioners, uh, challenging, if I want to borrow the 
words of Ted, challenging the, gra the government's grand narratives, contributed to a great extent in shaping, in creating uh, uh, a sense of nation, albeit a blurred sense of nation. And not only that, uh, it preserved the uh, uh, people's identity from being stolen by the government, which always attempts to equate national identity with party identity. And now with the emergence of the uprising and with the breaking of the barriers of fear, uh, uh, Syrian's people, uh, uh, Syrian people uh, 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 rushed to the street uh, as if searching for a stage in order to uh, um, demonstrate uh, their sense of, of, of who they are. Um, the uprising um, prompted the imagining of the, uh, 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 the nation. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and it prompted it since the beginning when, when it started to um, articulate a ki what kind of national political community we want to head towards. Uh, the um, arts and the performance of the, of the uprising uh, uh, portray some of the features of this reimagined nation. Tearing pictures of President Assad, the father and the son, uh, destroying statues of Hafez al-Assad, which means uh, uh, removing uh, uh, the regime's iconography from the public space is an act of dissociating the nation from the uh, ruling regime and its symbols. And it is an act of liberation and reposition of the nation. The slogans and banners of the uprising were the first uh, uh, public announcement of the identity. Uh, 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 slogans asserted the, um, uh, uh, the ideas of uh, uh, the unity of Syrian people when it says one, 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 Syrian people are one, as if we want to translate it uh, 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 literally from, from Arabic. And other slogans, um, uh, 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 we feel or, or, or we sense the, the, the acknowledgement of the diversity of the Syrian people within the frame of this unity. When it says, uh, not Sunni, not Alawi, uh, uh, Syrian people want uh, freedom. And other uh, slogans, um, mm, mm, we discern kind of uh, mm, solidarity, a sense of solidarity, and uh, a shared experience, uh, like the one which reads Odarawi, the Odarawi, which means uh, the resident of Dara. Odarawi, your blood is my blood, your burden is my burden. But I would say the performing of the nation and the uprising was particularly evident and given a kind of a dramatic expression uh, in the performance of Al-Arada. Al-Arada is a traditional uh, genre of singing and sometimes is accompanied by sword dance, do we say? We say sword dance, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And um, uh, this arada usually performed uh, at weddings, at other celebrations. And it's very interesting to note that al arada had been an element of the demonstration at uh, a, a national protest in 1920. 20. 
it's the time during uh, 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 during uh, the time of the um, uh, a great Syrian national uh, uh, revolt against the French. In um, the uprising, Al Arada become uh, becomes um, a central component, I would say, for of the oppositional. Uh, 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 demonstrations and rallies. Uh, in style, Al Arada uh, involves um, the enunciation of uh, phrases and questions by the leader singer, uh, followed by uh, the repetition of answers to questions by the audience. And now, this exchange between singer and uh, participants is accompanied by a rhythmic clapping and uh, changes in the tempo building, uh, 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 heading towards a crescendo, a dramatic crescendo. The importance of Al Arada at the demonstrations uh, is that it unfolds as a collective uh, a performance with a common awareness and shared sensibility about a great purpose and unity which uh, mm, uh, conveys mes uh, messages um, to fellow protesters elsewhere in the country and to the regime. And recording Al Arada uh, uploading it to, inter to the internet, uh, it gave these messages a worldwide exposure. The songs used in Al Arada um, uh, include lyrics uh, addressing um, members of the nation residing in other regions and localities. And now these uh, 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 places are all um, objects of uh, praise, of uh, admiration, and even pride. And all these localities are partners in the struggle against the regime. And they are all identified with Syria's request for freedom, as captured in the uh, protesters' uh, 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 refrain, Yalla Arhali Bashar which is, uh, come on, leave Bashar, Syria, Badahari, Syria wants uh, freedom, as we can see now. I want to show and you just I'm, I'm gonna play two this. minutes or three minutes. It's I'm just going to mention that um, there's, well, here, we'll play this first.
So um, when Nyla and I were talking about which one to show, because there's there's hundreds of these, um, there's um, there's one where they chant her name, which is the one I wanted to show. Um, but uh, this one is probably the most famous and one of the most popular. The the singer um, was found later dead with his um, uh, vocal cords ripped out of his they, throat. Yeah, they took off his throat while he was living. Yeah. Did you want to, shall we end there? I'm sorry to end with such a gruesome image, but um, it's, I mean, the, the potential, the excitement, the, the, the optimism in that scene is, um, is really quite striking. And the, even as, I just want to note that if you, you know, if you're online, if you're, if you're following the creative resistance, um, people continue. I mean, people continue to mount work. Um, there are people mounting work in territories controlled by ISIS. There's a, this. There continues to be this immense creative outpouring. So. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. Maybe yeah. you wanna just say something about the the clip. Uh, no, no, I don't want to comment on it, but I was, um, you know, mentioning the optimism and the hope. It was exactly when, uh, when um, uh, after the show of miniature, of historical miniature that I uh, 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 put in Citadel, in, in Damascus Citadel, and uh, because um, a number of uh, the prisoners, the political prisoners, my friends, who att they attended the play and they were sitting, they were sitting next to their cells where they, just like so recently, they were uh, uh, released from this, uh, like four years, before four years, watching theater celebrating the theater and on their side here are the cells in which they were in prison and after the show uh, it was so moving moments when I come to see them or when they come to see me and to talk uh, most of them were with tears um, remembering their uh, fellow prisoners uh, who had passed away in the prison, um, uh, uh, wishing if they were together, you know, with them to celebrate. And I remember that one of them told, said, and that was Ali, the brother All of right. Osama. Yeah. And he said, now I understand why did one news say 
hope is our lot. We are doomed by hope because hope to hope is to take the responsibility to hope within this kind of atrocity, within this kind of brutality, means to take the responsibility, means to sacrifice yourself, means to choose the hard, the hardship, the, the, the harder life. So when he said that, because sitting in the citadel, realizing that they are not anymore there, okay, in these cells, at the same time, celebrating theater, watching theater. Theater is a celebration. So is it an act of hope? Because most, most of these prisoner, prisoners, they ask me, did you want, I mean, did you put it here because you wanted to be like a, a appeal for, for, for hope? And that was strange for me, you know. It wasn't this for me, but after I thought about it, it was amazing, you know, to yeah. hope. Nyla, I, um, about that production, I, I understand that um, in the audience there were a number of government oh, officials. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, how did they respond to the. <laughs> One of them was the head, court, the head of the Central uh, Intelligence Service. Intelligence. Yeah. Uh, and he said, Oh, it's very good that uh, he had died. Otherwise, I should have hanged him. Yeah, when us had died uh, uh, several times. It's like, good that the playwright had died. He had just died three weeks before the opening. Yeah. And he said, it's good that he died. He had died. How do I put it in tenses? Yeah. I, yeah. Otherwise, I would have had to hang I, him. I would have had to hang him. Yeah, this is one of the reactions. Well, um, many figures of the of Syrian government, of the Syrian government, came and saw it. Uh, Asif Shaukat and Bushra al Assad yeah, yeah. were uh, uh, one of some, some of the names that they're chanting were in the audience. Yeah, came and uh, saw it, and they left before uh, you know they left uh, while people are. Uh, Uploading, and they sent me. Then somebody came and said, um, Asif Shokat sent you his uh, congratulation and said it's an amazing show. So this would be the mm -hmm. brother in law. Yes, of, the brother in law of, of the president. Of, uh, of the president who was killed. In he was, yes. An explosion. Yes, so, so all these, you know contradictions, yeah. uh, which has to do with that our government support theater. It supports the theater. But what kind of theater, you know? It supports the theater that may serve its interests or it supports the theater which may uh, 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 become or, or turn into a uh, platform or, uh, 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 or a forum uh, uh, to praise its uh, uh, political climate, political climate yeah. of, the, of the So, for example, government. I would just mention that as an, as an illustration of that, um, the, the year after, you know, Sadala Winnis was going to mount this play. Um, the adventures of the head of Jabba the Mamluk, and then on opening night, they were told they couldn't open it. But then the following year, uh, they sent a production of it to a festival in East Berlin. The play that could not be performed in Syria was sent abroad as a representation of Syrian of theater. Of Syrian theater. Yeah. And you've had experience with productions um, closing. Oh, yes, I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of instances were right up until the dress rehearsal. Lot. 
Yeah, my first actually uh, uh, production Leila after Layla Abid, the uh, Night, Night of the Slaves. Night of Slaves. Night of Slaves. Night of Slaves. It speaks about. Uh, it depicts. Uh, 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 the upper how the upper class and uh, uh, large landlords of Quraysh, it's the ruling tribe in Mecca, Arabic Peninsula, before Islam and after Islam. How Quraysh um, succeeded uh, uh, into or or how it. Uh, um, uh, uh, tried and succeed to subjugate the Islam in its early stages to serve its uh, uh, interests and you know using her uh, 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 its authority and uh, uh, it seemed that uh, the parallel with Al Ba'ath Party because Ba'ath Party before taking the power. Um, it, it used to, or to, to present itself as uh, a representative uh, of wronged people and uh, a defender of the justice. Uh, so the parallel with Al Ba'ath Party seemed to be very striking. So they banned it. They banned the play in the same day of the opening night around, uh, uh, I mean, in the afternoon of the same uh, 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 opening night, they called me and they said, cancel the opening and uh, tell the people, tell the people not to come. I said, I can't control that. How should I tell the people not to come? It's to Hamra and you know Hamra, yeah, it's, it's five, five, uh, hundred fifty seats. How shall I? You know, tickets were sold, the invitations were distributed. He said, well, we will control that. And it is actually, they controlled that. They blocked the streets from all its exits uh, that, that uh, led to, that leads to the, to the uh, theater by uh, mm, security services, yeah. cars, and they deployed their personnel everywhere in the street and at the gates of the theater. And they banned anyone to come in. Instead, 50, 57 members, government members came to see the play. They were ministers, they were members of parliament, uh, high rank generals, military generals, high rank uh, 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 officials. And it was headed by the prime minister, who was at the same time, Abdullah Ahmar, who was at the same time the uh, general secretary of uh, Ba'ath Party. And they banned it. They don't know, they don't say, of course, why they did that, but uh, sometimes the censors or the, the smell of the censor is very good, you know. Sometimes they are not stupid. Most of the time they are very stupid, you know. <laughs> but, but sometimes they can, you know, smell it, smell the bad uh, 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 odor. Um, when the playwright later <coughs> asks that, how it come? Why? Why did you ban the uh, uh, the, uh, the performance while the book, the play? is in the market since six years. And they say, uh, uh, well, how many people will read the book how, every day? How many people will come to see the, 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 the production every night? So sometimes they know very well what they are, what they are doing because, you know, it's the theater. I mean, what makes theater so unique is that um, uh, so unique and so threatening to dictators is that when the spectators uh, uh, is that because the spectators in a communal uh, uh, they are unified in a communal context uh, watching the same thing at the same time they turn into a powerful uh, 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 collective 
with a shared awareness of their condition. And there isn't anything more threatening to dictators than the, a group of people sharing an awareness of their condition, an awareness a consciousness about their conditions, about their environments. This is very threatening. Also, it is one thing to see, the, to, to, to read about an incident, to read about uh, 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 an event, genocide, whatsoever. It is quite another to see it embodied through the actors. Um, uh, 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 the the, the uh, contact with the essence of the actor, um, uh, the choices the actor does in words and gestures and uh, 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 intonation makes the audience live the experience. And living experiences are those who potentially have the ability to, 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 I mean, to, for action. So theater conveys the experience with all its dimension and turns it into a living experience. That's why mm -hmm. theater is different and threatening and... We, we should probably turn it to the audience. Hmm? Are there, are there questions sorry, yes. for, for yes. Nyla? Or, I'm sorry. Or, or me. <laughs> <laughs> no, for you. So what we just watched, is that an organized, is that one of the organized performances, or was that more of like a protest type Oh, situation? not at all. It okay. is a protest. Okay, that's what I thought. a spontaneous cool. protest. Wow. It, it, is, it is interesting, though, that um, the regime would organize these kinds of things in the past. So I was there for the presidential referendum. There's, there's not an election in Syria. Uh, there's only one candidate to choose from, but you get the opportunity to vote yes or no, and the president routinely gets 98%. And for a week before, or maybe it was multiple weeks, uh, it happens every seven years, and I was there the last time, and for two weeks beforehand, they would close off major uh, rotaries, and they would have these kinds of events where mm. someone would be singing a song about the president yeah. and the audience. People forced, of course. Yeah, of course. They're, 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 uh, they are threatened in their livelihood, you know, if they don't participate. So it, it really is significant that, I mean, it really is a response to the regime. It's not just that the, that the content is anti-regime. It is an act of seizing the form from the, the hands of the regime, um, which is a, a theme throughout the book of how people are able to take the vocabulary, the key terms that have been carefully shaped by the regime and turn them on their head, be able to take performance forms that have been uh, take, you know, com commandeered by the regime, um, historical figures that um, have been part of a, you know, a very organized effort in the school systems to link the Ba'ath Party with an ongoing Arab struggle, and how playwrights then take these figures and transform them, make them mean the opposite of what they're supposed to mean. Mm. So, but this is a kind of moment where it's not a playwright doing this, it's people rushing to the street to reclaim Absolutely. a performance form. Yeah. 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 So can you say a little bit more about other performance forms that you mentioned that are sort of repurposed? It seems very interesting that it's it's so pervasive. It's not just about content, but it's yeah. about the entire shebang. Well, there, I, I actually, the one of the things that, I, one of the uh, difficulties was I was not able to travel, you know, back to Syria during the uprising, which had been my plan. But there are um, there are dance troops that have been very much supported by the regime. Um, and in fact, um, during the presidential referendum, there was this uh, particular dance troupe that staged a mass, um, uh, a mass gathering. It was like, I mean, it, it was like on the scale of a Vrenov, where literally a thousand, pe a thousand people were, were part of this choreographed action that went down the autostrade in Meze, where 
huge numbers of people dressed up like chefs of wheat, huge numbers of people dress, dressed up like different agricultural products, all to like praise the, 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 it was like out of Stalin. I mean, it was, it was all to praise the increase in agricultural production, all to praise the, it was, um, the, um, you know, the, the increased capacity of Syrian factories and the like. Um, and so, um, you know, there, it's just, there's a whole tradition of dance too, that is about repurposing dance that has been used to praise the regime. Um, there are, um, you know, I remember the, the, the first, um, uh, International Theater Festival in Damascus that was after the Gulf War. They had been curtailed for quite some time. And um, there was this dance troupe that did a piece that was about, kind of encapsulated the history of um, the Arab world, culminating with the rise of the Ba'ath Party and the attempts to liberate Palestine. Um, and um, because this is the, the marker of legitimacy. Um, so when these same, when dance troops then, and it was filled with references to dub key and other line dances, traditional line dances and traditional sword dancing and the like. And so when an, other uh, theater um, dance companies invoke these same forms, but do so in a way that, um, you know, references dynamics of power, it's, it's much more, it's of course extremely abstract, but um, draw attention to unequal systems of power that where there are moments in dance pieces that uh, resemble uh, interrogation sessions, um, but it's, it's folded into something that begins to look like a dub key. These kinds of moments are, are, I think, salient examples of when artists contest, they fight over the right of the uh, performative form. But most of the book is about theater. Is theater emerging in the refugee camps? And if so, what are the topics and the subjects? And is that theater experiencing any resistance from the host nation? It's, it's, about, it's a question about the theater that's being done in, in and, and, and Jordan and Lebanon. Uh, uh, and, yeah. Now, the one that now, is yeah. Yeah, yeah. Antigone, what, you are right. talking about. Anything. Anything. Ah, Anything. Yeah, so, no, so Joe, oh, yes. Joe doesn't actually, the answer is yes, and she's assuming yes, that yes. you're familiar with the Trojan yes, Women yeah. Project and the Antigone Project and... Yeah, actually, actually... Um, One of Nyla's students. Are, yeah, <laughs> most of them, yeah, uh, uh, are, are working with the refugee, um, a kind of a therape th therapeutic uh, theater, and... Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't know details about that, but I see they send me some pictures and uh, um, uh, tomorrow is the opening of another, uh, 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 three days ago was the opening of one of uh, uh, the shows. Um, it's um, done, it's called uh, Antigone, the Syrian Antigone, and um, uh, well, we can guess the uh, plot line. <laughs> what is it? You know, to bury the right to bury the the brother or not, and confronting. Um, and it was so interesting. From the uh, I saw uh, some footage footages yeah, in the, the, footage. In the uh, uh, YouTube, and um, um, it was only with women. All the show was women, even the authority personnel. They were women and all uh, different ages of women. Uh, there, there, there were old hmm. women, there were very young women. So, so oh, if I could just add, jump in. Omar Abu Sada, who was one of Nyla's students, along with uh, Muhammad al Attar and several others who worked with her, subsequently were trained by uh, European NGOs in Boal forum techniques and theater therapy. Um, this referred to a, this happened in a very brief window, 
when Syria set up a series of domestic NGOs, um, Syrian-owned, Syrian-controlled NGOs that were really um, headed up by major figures in the regime. Um, so that they essentially was an attempt to, co to kind of co-opt the civil society movements. And these NGOs, um, if other NGOs wished to come into the city, the, into Syria, they had to partner with these regime NGOs. And one of the projects that came out of this was um, a desire to work on issues of l women's literacy and health in different countryside settings. And so um, the UN trained this group of kids in Boal technique to um, uh, raise awareness around these issues. The, the, the students would spend months in the villages researching and doing theater games with uh, members before the, the full troop would come in and begin to develop work. Um, that After a short period of time, these were shut down. Uh, this was not what they had bargained for. He did get, Omar did get permission to work with um, juvenile offenders. Um, Syrians are, were, were tried at the age of uh, 11 at, um, as adults. So there were people doing jail time for petty offenses. And um, there he got training in therapeutic theater technique with um, and drama therapy technique through a group called Movimundo, and they were allowed to do one project in a jail um, before they were shut down again. So um, this particular director has this background and training. Mohammed al Attar actually went to and studied applied theater at um, Goldsmiths, yeah, you, in, uh, in, in London. London. Um, and they've been spearheading these projects, um, both in in Jordan and now in Lebanon. Um, in addition to that, um, Marwan Bulbul, uh, no, um, Bulbul Farhan. Nawar. Nawar Bulbul, Afwan, thank you. Nawar Bulbul has been doing just productions of Shakespeare with and kids in refugee camps. In Zatari. In Zatari. In, in Jordan, yes. Um, so yes, there is. And the, the host uh, countries have, I mean, it's all under the, uh, the host countries have not resisted it. Could you um, elaborate a bit more on why certain um, uh, plays are shown and why others are not that are political. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, Dorit Laham, for instance, Dayat Tishreen and so on. Like, what about, sure. what about that criticism makes it uh, so, more tolerable? You know, in the book, I, uh, what I do is I, I go into the historical circumstances around each production. I, I talk about the spe specific artists involved and how the production means in that given moment and what are the events that lead to it. So, you know, for example, in this story about Naila Latrash directing this, this band play at the very site of Syrian detainment and torture. You know, I mean, how is it that that came about? Well, there's a very specific story that explains how it came about. Um, and, you know, with, in each instance, there's a story. Um, so, you know, um, uh, Soiree for the 5th of June, which is an absolutely damning play, right? It is a play that says the current regime has rendered us anything but a nation. They've made us deaf, dumb, and blind. Um, they have lied to us about the 67 war. And in the midst of the production, the audience members who are actors begin to actually take over the, the scene and start, you know, rallying for an uprising. And actors representing the regime come in with guns and force everyone out of the theater. He says, you're all under arrest, get out of the theater, and that's how the play ends. This play had a long and successful run. So, I mean, you're like, what? How is that possible? Um, well, Hafez al-Assad had just come to power. Um, and um, it could have been a, you know, it, it could have, is this play about me or is this a play about the last bastard? Um, and um, it was allowed a run. Then his, when this is next play was banned. Um, so um, in some ways it feels capricious. And, and in fact, you know, the, it, the, it is structured to be somewhat capricious. There's not consistency in who's going mm. to be in the, um, the um, censorship office. 
Um, Nyla has stories of submitting the same play over and over again, giving it a different title, and eventually getting permission to perform it. Um, it, was, it was banned a year. After a year, I changed the title, and I could show it. Yeah. So, <laughs> it was you know, just changing the title. And so, so part of it is about a kind of willful capriciousness. Part of it is about incompetence. But a lot of it is about how the play can be spun in a, his, in a specific moment. Um, Do you think that something yes. about who, um, who uh, performs the play, since you know, it's, uh, oh. it's a cinema and theater that's all about major stars, so do you think something about that also? Well, the first thing is that there are, um, the question is about, you know, are, um, does the, um, the question was, does the reputation or the notoriety of the performers impact it? Um, is it also a story of personalities? Well, after uh, Night of the Slaves, Nyla was banned from directing for uh, uh, over a decade, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's also, a, there's a lot of self-censorship that's involved, too, because you don't want to be that person who now has to sit out for 10 years. Um, that's also a very effective tool. Um, certain people, though, gain a certain notori international notoriety that they're able to do work that others aren't. I mean, the prime example is Sadella Wanos. He was able to write things that no other Syrian would be allowed to write um, because of his international reputation. Um, whether, you know, major stars can get permission. Ma major stars tend to... to keep their distance from particularly dangerous work. I don't want to overstate that. Well, my that. first attempt for in, in miniature, uh, the, the uh, characters were played by the stars, the superstars yeah. of Syria, and it was banned. Yeah. So. Krista? Uh, yeah, I'd like to actually follow on from that. And I don't know if this is what you were getting at, but um, it, it it, to what extent is the is the claim um, that certain actors in particular and other cultural producers are regime supporters, so therefore they get away with? Is that kind of what you were getting at? I'm, I'm um, yeah, it's about the perception of criticism as constructive versus expressive, which seems to be more right. effective. Right. Yeah. 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 So why was for, so specifically why was Dered Lahab? able to do these works uh, yes. that are questionable. Well, uh, and then comes out as a, a, as a regime support. Well, we have a theory, and it's not only a theory, there it's is the us. history before, uh, 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 behind that is mm -hmm. um, uh, um, when Hafez Assad came to uh, uh, rule, to, to power, and um, since he was the Minister of Defense, he used to attend Masrah al-Shok. It's the thrones. The Theater of Thorns. The, the, theater of Thrones, which was the basis of all th the theater of the Red Laham, you know. And uh, when he became the president of Syria, um, he invited the troop and he told them that he was so satisfied of what they are doing and that he wants them to go ahead. I think, I think, it's my theory, he has understood very well the kind of the service this theater does, which is, you know, uh, uh, which we call it the um, safety valve. Tenfis. Tenfis, yes? Tenfis. And you go to the theater, and on the stage, you see all the, uh, 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 the inhibitions. Uh, the uh, prohibitions. The, uh, uh, oh. On the stage, you see all the kind of the behaviors of uh, um, the uh, security services. You see all that, and uh, uh, which means as if you leave, you leave the theater feeling satisfied that they have been already criticized 
here, okay? And everything is fine. So you go outside of the theater, all this pent up rage, all, all this pent up uh, uh, frustration, kind of anger. Frustration, anger. What? It just, you know. But may I ask lost. another? But if I could. Maybe this is one reason. But think also, I mean, the, the other thing is those plays always. Um, so, for example, Dayata Tashreen, uh, October Village, is, about, is granted it depicts a history of bumbling dictators, but it culminates with the, with, the, with, with the October War. And there's yes. this moment of reclaiming a potential yes. success. And, um, and praising the war yeah. that, you know, the victory of the war, in the actual fact, it wasn't a victory, yeah. not at all. So this kind so, of theater And similarly, a, a play like... Serves. When Muhammad al-Mahud, for example, the playwright, the prominent player, Syrian playwright, uh, uh, discovers or found out that through Casa Kawatan, through Cheers... Uh, Cheers Homeland. Homeland, that... In a way, it's, it is serving the regime because it's helping, you know, it's just, it's just... Uh, releasing the pressure. Yeah. Exactly, releasing the pressure, exactly. Uh, uh, when he realized that, he uh, 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 left the Red Laham and left the troop, and it was, you know for him a kind of like as if they were betraying him. But if I could play devil's advocate for a moment, sure. um, couldn't that be said of all political theater in Syria? Well, I, I would actually make, I, I would make the case that um, Laham, I mean, I, I, I similarly, I would have had the good fortune of, me, of meeting Mahout before he passed away. And his anger at, at Dred Laham was immense, um, just absolutely immense. And I, I do think that um, there is a kind of, in the texts, there's a kind of revolutionary potential in those texts. And I, certainly in his earlier works and in his later works, they're, they're scathing. Um, and I do Ham's think work. no in in, in Mahout, Mahout's, Mahout's work. work. And I feel I do think that in some ways that Dred Lahab's si siding with the regime uh, isn't surprising, um, given that he had always brought a kind of lightness to those shows. Yes. Um, and um, at least to hear Mahout say it, tell it was the reason that those productions tended to shift towards. Um, forgiving the regime. And certainly if you look at some of the independent work that Lahun, um, uh, Dred Laham did in film and the, the one play that he did without Mahout, they really um, uh, really are supportive of the regime at the end of the day. Takrir is an, you know, incredibly supportive of the, of the president at the end of the day. Did you want to... No, I was just wondering... Oh, could the, the notion of tenfis, generally speaking, of, of licensed criticism. Yeah. I was just wondering which, pl you know, even so, even though we know this about Laham, and it's become clear a, a, after the uprising where he stands, couldn't the same thing be said about, all, about political theater more generally, that it does allow people to see this being criticized, even more, it wouldn't it even be... Um, more useful as a safety valve tool if the play is not softened with those touches that Ham softened his plays with, right. but were really critical, like the ones you've been talking about. Like would that, that still be? Was, would that still be? Ten, uh, ten would piece? it still not be useful as a safety valve? How yeah. is that not a safety valve if it's allowed to be produced? Well, I, I think that. I mean, I think the answer is that it's this complicated dance. Yeah, it is I where are the boundaries of permissible speech? And the regime is attempting to set the terms. There's a certain kind of power that the regime receives in the fact that this audience um, comes together and behaves as if we don't know what the play is actually about. No one says out loud. I am yet to find an Arab writer who simply states the obvious about what um, 
and I'm about the uh, historical miniatures is about. I've in all of the criticism I've read of it in Syria, there's never anybody who says, and by the way, it's about the Israelis. I mean, it's astounding to me. People say, oh, it's a controversial play because it dis depicts Islam in a negative light. I'm like, you know, the, all these things. And there's never anything in it that is about the fact that it's depicting the Israelis. So there's a kind of power that the regime demonstrates in the fact that we have, you know, we're all going to just look at the emperor and say that, you know, we're not going to note that he has no clothing. Um, but in fact, the artists are aware of that danger and they are constantly working against what the regime wants their theater to be. Um, so yes, it is a potential danger for any piece of work that can become, you know, a safety valve. Um, and the thing that's remarkable about, about this artist is they so often f get the upper hand, at least by my reading. Um, and, uh, you know, Marut, when Marut concluded that, in fact, he had been duped, uh, he was furious, absolutely furious about it. Thank you. Uh, from the subtitle of the book, uh, so you, you seem to be taking a, like a 50 year span, right? Yes. Uh, so I was wondering if you'd talk about the geographies of the performances between since 1967 up to the uprising, because these types of performances that we're seeing, the popular performances, uh, are done on the streets, very spontaneous, and they span all of Syria from Dara'a to Hamas to Halab. What about the other, pol right. the, the staged uh, theater directions? Are they also span? Well, I have to confess that um, I, you know, I talk about Walid Ikhlasi and his, the director he worked with in, in uh, Aleppo, but uh, most of the book is focused on um, theater and, um, and um, s ceremonies that are happening in Damascus. Um, and I think that that is a large measure. I mean, that's that's because of the the limits of my knowledge, um, but it's also about um, where a lot of theatrical production is being done. Um, and Homs in particular, and Homs, there is a very advanced yeah, theater yeah. with the troupe of Farhan Bulbul. Yes. Yes. Uh, a playwright and director, and he has a permanent uh, troupe. Uh, through this troupe. Uh, 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 the whole, uh, 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 the ho I mean, the whole city of Homs, uh, uh, through the troop of Arham Bilbul, um, um, uh, was engaged in a very, uh, um, in a, or involved in a very active cultural, uh, what? Culture. I mean, Flourish. I mean, uh, e e yes. Um, for Hamble with his troop, uh, has influenced the whole cultural life in Homs, for example, through his theater. And uh, uh, it, it isn't very much represented in, in the book. The book no. yeah. In fact, I talk uh, about you only have one. mentioned for Hamble uh, Yeah. I mean, I talk yeah. about one Farhan Bulbul play that I think is was really important yeah. to, to the theme. Most I'm of his uh, plays are political. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Political. No, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, you know, um, in organizing the book around these key terms, it in some ways meant um, excluding plays that I think are very important um, and maybe giving more attention to plays that, while I think very important in terms of the relationship of these. Of, of this kind of contest over these images or these ideas uh, might not be plays that I think are uh, deserve to, you know, to be um, noted. I, I, if I were just writing a play about, a book about great theater, Ali Akla Arsad would not appear in that book. But if I'm going to write a play, uh, a, a book about, uh, you know, a battle over ideas, then Arsan has to figure prominently because he's such a prominent voice for the regime. Yes. Um, yeah, and uh, the truth is, I could find nothing. I mean, the archives of the National Theater are um, 
poorly organized and scant, and there's really nothing in there that's outside of Damascus. And so um, you're absolutely that's right, right. Ham and Heleb are not uh, sufficiently represented in the book. Um, you mentioned earlier that some uh, plays that were banned inside Syria were allowed to go outside and represent the, the, the country. Could you, is there a pattern, like um, what would make something not good for internal consumption but good for external consumption? Because other countries are known for that, like Cuba does yeah. that a lot um, with many fe international festivals. Well, ab you know, absolutely. Um, the the uh, the play that I mentioned, the Adventures of the Head of Jabber the Mamluk, are, is a play that counsels its audience to question its leaders, and um, and to and it essentially asks you, are you asking them the right questions? Because if you don't ask the right questions, they'll cut your heads off. Um, and I mean, quite literally, that's what the play does. There's a moment where the actors come forward and they interrogate the audience. Um, t and ask them, what have you learned? And there's an onstage audience, it's all set in a coffee shop, and the onstage audience hasn't learned anything. Um, and so there's hopefully a kind of frustration at their failure. So, you know, within Syria, um, this is extremely provocative. You, the last thing you want is, you know, audiences uh, being told that they need to question their leaders and that. Um, if, uh, and in fact, that they're being ruled by someone who will potentially cut their heads off. Um, but in East, you know, showing this play in East Germany is a manifestation of just how open the dialogue is, just how, you know, the regime, how comfortable the regime is with that criticism. with criticism and with questioning and with dialogue. Um, so obviously, you know, it's for very obvious reasons, it's a play that you would you would mm. want to represent you. Uh, the same thing happens in film. Um, you know, there's a great many wonderful Syrian films that have had one viewing in Syria, uh, but are very prominently promoted on the international film circuit um, because it is a way of um, demonstrating how open and secular this uh, regime is. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. This is the policy of uh, of of the regime is how to turn the artists into propagandists and mouthpieces. It's this is yeah. Who don't the artists who don't join the bandwagon of praising the political climate is almost marginalized and 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 treated as outcast of the system. So this is the... <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.